All right. So excellent idea. Let's focus on graph stuff. What's uh what's some smart stuff to plug in here? All right, let's try this again. Let's start from a different place. Related to this question. Stay with me now. When you want to try to graph a function, if you know how to find its domain, it's a great first step. Because finding the domain tells you what you're allowed to plug in. This problem, I know it didn't say graph it, but this problem did say find the domain. How would I find the domain of this guy? Well, it's got to be true over the inside of a logarithm. It's sort of like a square root, only worse. What's a log look? What's an exponential look like? Do it in the air for me. What's an exponential look like? You guys love What's an exponential look like? Can you guys draw it in the air? Can you guys make an exponential? All right, I see a few of you guys. I see some of you guys is going. He goes straight up to All right, so he goes, whoa, right? Woo, whatever sound effect you want to make. And what's the important thing about down here? Down here, what's important for just to, it, it approaches what? The x axis approaches zero. So it looks like what? We'll make it really quick. Wah. I let the details out because I don't know what the base is, but that's basically what an exponential looks like. So when some of you guys put on the test, you put this, that was a problem. You put this, that was kind of a problem. You put a straight line, that was a problem. You've got to know the shape of it because then you almost can't go wrong. You get a couple points and you put the shape on top of it, you're golden. Okay. Now, what does it have to do with a damn thing, Jeff? I don't remember. Oh, yeah. If I invert this, what kind of a function will I get? Because what kind of function was this one again? Exponential, a to the x. If I invert it, I will not get a root. I'll get a, what is the definition of the, the inverse of an exponential? What's the logarithm? Okay. Right? Logs, how do we create logarithms? We inverted the exponential. In fact, we graphed the damn thing before we even knew what it was. Because it was just the inverse. Before we even gave it a name, we graphed the inverse of this guy. And then we gave it that funky-ass name, log. So what's the key here, then? What's this? This is going to be... That's the y-axis, that's right. It's going to be asymptotic here. You can say a more interesting word, asymptotic. It's got asymptotic behavior of x equals 0. So on the y-axis, it approaches the y -axis. What's the smallest x I can't quite put in? I can't put in x equal to 0 because it doesn't have an output for that, does it? OK, so what is the domain of this guy? x has to be, what do we just say? The x has to be greater than 0. If I put a 0 in there, what's this thing asking me? If I put log base 2 of 0, what is it asking me? What's the question? What power do I raise 2 to to get 0? If I raise 2 to the negative 5, I get 1 over 2 to the 5th. Is that small? Sure. Is it zero? No. If I raise two to the negative five billionth, is that small? Oh, shit, yes. Is it zero? No. Shit. It will never get to zero, which is what the graph of it means. It's, got, it's asymptotic at zero. So there's no answer to that question. It can't work at zero. In fact, it can't work for zero or negatives. What's up? Okay. So... Now, the next level of this, oh, this hurts so much. This hurts your brain because you've got you to actually think about what things mean. A smart thing to put in 
to any logarithm, to be honest, is 1. Notice how I left some space. Because there's a smart thing below 1 to put in there, too. Why is 1 always a smart thing to put into a logarithm that's not shifted around or anything? Because what is log base anything of 1? 0. Because when you raise something to to make it become 1, you raise something to the 0. Now, the other smart things to put in for x have to be based on what number? Because of this function I'm working with. 2. So, for example, 2 to the first is 2. So, I want to put a 2 in. What's log base 2 of 2? Log base 2 of 2 is 1 because it takes 1, 2 to make 2. It's crazy. What's something below 1 that would be a smart input? Not zero, we just covered that a lot. Alright, let's try this again. I love you guys. The fundamental thing to understand about trying to use logarithms is what are you not allowed to put into them? Zero or less. So stop telling me to put negatives in there because the poor little thing's going to freak out. We'll be nice to this little thing. Poor little log. Oh. Put some negatives in there, it blows up. You don't want that. So I've got to put things bigger than zero, but I want a number less than one that's somehow based on two. What's two to the negative one? One half. So I'm going to put a one half in. I have to think backwards. Why do I have to think backwards? Because this is a logarithm, which is the inverse of an exponential. All right. This is thought. This is thinking. This is knowing what something really means. I want to put a number in there that I know what I raised 2, 2 to get it. So 4 would be a good thing in there too, right? Well, I would have put a 4 in there because what do I raise 2, 2 to get 4? 2. So I put a 4, I get a 2. But also 1 half because what do I raise 2, 2 to get 1 half? Negative 1. So now I just got to plot those. And you know the general shape of a logarithm is this guy. So this is the general shape of a log. So if I ask you to graph a log and your shape doesn't look anything like this, you're wrong. Okay? You've got to know the basic shapes of functions. I try to make a big deal of that. Every time I did a new function, we looked at its shape, and I try to make a big deal out of the shape of it. So now if you just plot those points, you can just put the shape in there on top of it. One half, negative one. One, zero. Two, one. Four, two. There's the shape. Say again? What's up? This is one half, yeah. You guys get that? I love when I see a perfect graph but no good work, which means you let the calculator do it for you. If you don't understand how that's complete bullshit, then I can't help you. I'm sorry. You need to do it. Uh, number two is a difficult problem. I understand it. That's why I put it on the practice test so you look at it without just throwing it out you out of nowhere. Let's go back real quick to part B because I was looking at that earlier. Yes. Yeah, at least on part of it, you'll be able to use the calculator. Okay. How do I find this guy's domain? Let's see if we remember what we said earlier. What's got to be true about the inside of a logarithm? It has to be greater than zero. So you can say it in words. The inside has to be inside greater than zero. Now put it in mathish. Inside is 2x minus 7. This is to find the domain. That's got to be greater than zero. And then just solve that. How have we done domains about with given the function forever? We say in English what the problem is or what has to happen, and we put that in mathish and solve it. 
right? 1 over x minus 2. The bottom can't be 0. x minus 2 cannot equal 0. Solve it. x can't be 2. It's the same idea. Always. So you're going to get x greater than 7 halves. Now notice something. What, what's, the, what's the domain of an exponential? What's the domain of an exponential? And domain relates to what again? The domain relates to inputs. Domain relates to x. What's the domain of an exponential? I could put in anything I want to. So the domain for an exponential is always going to be negative infinity to infinity. Now, now, stay with me now. How does a logarithm relate to an exponential? They are inverses of each other. So one guy's domain is going to be the other guy's range because how do I make it inverse from a function? I switch the x and y, and domain is x's, the range is y. So they just freaking switch. That's almost too good to believe. Holy shit. Right? So any exponential function I give you, if I ask you what the domain is, the answer is negative infinity to infinity. Any logarithm I, I give you, and if I ask you what the range is, the answer is negative infinity to infinity. One guy's domain is the other guy's range. Now, let's see. So this guy's range is going to be negative infinity to infinity because it's logarithm. It goes forever up and down. It's all the possible y values, all the possible outputs. So what's this guy's domain for part A? What kind of function is that? What kind of function is this? Yes, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. Because it's an exponential. And exponentials, do they leave any x's out? No. But what do they leave out? They leave some y's out, don't they? They don't, they don't go below the x-axis. So the range is going to be restricted. In fact, the range starts where? The range starts almost at the asymptote and goes forever up. Unless I flip the whole thing around, which you guys will do in the next class if you take a freak out. So here the asymptote is normally at zero, so normally the range is zero to infinity. Zero to infinity, not including zero, because zero is an asymptote. Where is the asymptote for this guy? It goes up three. I don't know. You can't see. That'd be good. I was doing some tie dye over the weekend. I got so it goes up three. So the range starts at three now. Everything about this function goes up three. So the, the, the asymptote is normally at zero, but now it's going to be where? At three. So the range is now going to be three to infinity because I just lifted the whole thing up three. That's why on that quiz, I ask you to identify where the asymptote is. Why? Because that's one of the most important parts of the graph is the asymptote. It's like identifying the parabola of a vertex. A vertex of a parabola, there it is. Okay, okay. Kind of ran with that question a bit. Yes? Um, so for the first graph, if you just graphed it as if it was exponential and then flipped it into like that way, would that be okay? Like you would just have to uh, I'll probably have more specific instructions on the test itself. I'd want you to work directly with this. But you think backwards about it. I mean, that's basically what you would be doing there, but you're doing it a little too much. I want you to kind of be able to work with it directly. Some crazy. Oh, you're right? Yeah, I'm still looking at it. Alright, guys. I got that feeling. Alright. Anything else you guys want to focus on? You want to look at, like, uh, oh, there's another graphing problem. You want to look at this guy? Yeah. Try to graph this guy using what I call translation the shift. Now this graph is going to get a little bit busy with all the stuff you got to do at all. I use different colors I try to.
है
That's really all there is to that. I know that one wasn't involved in this problem, but it totally could be on the test. So here, I just took every point and went down to, because it just says, take two away from all the outputs. So this is my answer now for the function itself. Now, how do I graph the inverse of that? If I have a graph of something, how do I graph the inverse of it? I just switch the x and y on all the points. So what point is this? Zero, negative one. So now it's going to go through negative one, zero. Did I do that right on the, I probably did that wrong in the practice. This is awesome, Jeff. This is the point one, one. So it's going to stay one, one. And this is the point negative one, almost negative two. So now it's going to be almost negative two, negative one. So it's going to be right there. Probably my poor little graph. Let's see, did it come out okay? Yeah, it came out okay. Yay. Poor little dude. <clears throat> so that step shouldn't be too bad. You just take every point you see, switch it, and then plot those. So when I give you a graph, you just make an XY table of all the points you can see. Bless you. Switch all the X and Ys, and then re-graph that. It's almost too easy to believe. You just switch the points and then plot them again. And you know what the answer should look like. There should be symmetry. There should be a reflection. And this is beautiful. The one's going that way, the one's going that way. Oh, that's an awesome wow, wow, right? Daniel's not showing me the inverse. Oh, wow, some kind of a karate kid. Okay. So those are the two kind of graphing questions I'm going to ask you. Actually, three. Uh, just straight up graph something. Uh, graph something using translations. And graph uh, the inverse of something that I give you. Okay. We've seen a lot of problems like that last one. Yes? Can we do 7C? <coughs> Oh yeah, I love 7C. Uh, I would. So, do you see how this thing is not linear? It is sure as all hell is not linear. <coughs> and it's equal to zero. So, I mean, how do I solve things like that where x is not to just the first power? I have to do what with this stuff? So, watch this. If I just took the e to the 2x out, so here's the problem. How would you solve this? How would you solve this? Factor. Yes. So you do the same thing here. It's just, what comes out of all uh, of both now? What, what number comes out? What number comes out? Four. How many x's come out? One. How many, what e to the two x? That thing comes out, right? Because they both have it. Nothing new there. Whatever they both have can come out. Greatest common factor. So the e to the 2x being in both. You could argue that's, that's new. No, it's not. They both have it, so it comes out. And what's left now? Yeah, this guy lost a 4. He lost an x. And he lost his e to the 2x. Poor little dude. This guy lost his x, lost his e. They're gone. 12 divided by 4 is... Can you guys see at least two answers there? Either x is three. three. Here's one that sometimes you guys miss. Or x is yeah. zero. Can e to the 2x ever equal zero? What is the fundamental idea of the graph of exponential? As an asymptote at zero. So can it ever equal zero? No. So that does not give me any answers. It's just like saying 4 equals 0. Does that make any sense? No. So 4 doesn't give me any answers. This guy, e to the 2x equals 0, makes as much sense as saying 4 equals 0, because that can't be true. No. Doesn't give me an answer. Yes? Wait, how did you get, why did you get x equals 0 again, like for your answer? 
Because if x is 0, the whole thing is 0. So either this piece is 0, which leads me to 3, or this piece is 0, which leads me to x equals 0, or this is 0, which doesn't give any answers because it can never equal 0. Stuff oh, that's what I did. I forgot. I just totally forgot about the two. That's a good job. So here was the very first thing I should do that I just decided not to because I'm a. There's a two here. So what do I have to do with that two? Yeah. Why do I have to move that two? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I want to put it back in the power because I don't have any properties about log something minus two logs of something. Okay, I get that two out of the way. And now I can rewrite this as log base b of what? When I subtract, I must have been dividing. I'm subtracting powers, so I must have been dividing the actual things themselves. So the answer key, I just left this 2 out, just to be different. And now you should know, I'm trying to keep this skill alive. The factoring skill, because it's going to be everywhere on the file. Just about. So now how do I factor the top? X minus 6. Yeah, X minus 6. Good. If I just write a couple of these on the bottom, I can see exactly what happens. All right. I lose one of those guys. So it should be log base b of x minus 5 over x minus 6. Because you got to move that 2 out of the way. So again, some of you guys worry so much about every piece of this. This is log of something. I don't give a shit what it is. Minus, when I move that out of the way, log of something. So that's log of the first thing over the second thing. It's, yes? Can you do 5C? 5C? Yeah. Okay. This is related to that problem that was on the, the quiz, I think. Um, everybody had a problem that looks something like this here. 8 to the log base 8. Of, 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 of R. And there's nothing in the way of these two things interacting, so what would 8 to a power and log base 8 do to each other? They would kill each other because they're inverses, so the answer would be R. Yay. So here, what is in the way of me doing that? G is in the way. Right? It's making glog. Sounds like some medieval drink you don't want to have. So what do I want to do with the G? Or what am I allowed to do with it? Can't bring it down. It's nothing that does that. It's already down. It wants to go back up. So where is the log in this problem? Where is the log? It is in the <coughs> exponent of 7. So forget about 7 for a second. Right there, what can I do with that expression? I can move the g back up onto the d. That's a power, right? That's what logarithms do. If there's a coefficient, it goes back up. So you guys take that 7 and start doing all kinds of weird things with it. No, there's no log with the 7. It's up here. So you got to get that g up out of the way. Now it's 7 to the log base 7, d to the g. All I did was put the g back up. I got the g out of the way, so now what can I do with these? So the answer is D to the G. Power is straight up G. So see how coefficients of logs 
very often can be seen as being in the way, especially when I'm trying to simplify stuff. I just get them out the way. Good, I like it. So there are two shifts here, right? There's there's one shift is up one, and what's the other shift? Left three. So if I take those out of the way, what I'm left with is the base function, the thing that I'm actually going to do this to. So if I take those out of the way, what function am I left with? Two to the x. So if I graph this and then do this to it, I'm done. And now I always graph a to the x. I say 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first is 2. I use those three points. Now, please, dear God, it's not a straight line, right? So it goes like this. And now every single point, I'm going to take them up 1. Left three. Oh, yes. Up one, left three. One, two, three. Bam. Up one. I need some more left. There we go. Up one, left three. One, two, three. Up one, left three. Up one, left three. One, two, three. What? Where does the asymptote end up? The asymptote goes up one, left three. Who gives a crap about left and right? It goes infinitely long left and right. So if I move it over, it's still freaking same thing. You don't have to make that weird ass sound when you do it. So in this money graph. Bless you. <laughs> All right. Oh, I said this last time too, last time I had a test. Uh, if you want to come to the lab right before class tomorrow, I, I'll open it up to anybody who wants to come. Obviously, if you're in that lab, you probably should be here. But if you also want to come, if you're not in the lab, you want to come to tomorrow's lab before class, makes sense. A little bit of a last minute review. Okay. You must be multiplying. Oh, okay. So log base something A plus log base something B is log base something AB. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. I didn't take last Thursday's quiz, but I take it tomorrow.